Good morning, my name is Purely Deaf, your favorite deaf rapper. I wanted to point out another battle rap technique that I noticed when Appa was battling Rum Nitty. I do highly recommend that you watch episode number eight before watching this video. In particular, the part where I talk about, you know, a traditional punchline, I think that will make the explanation of what happens in this battle a little bit more coherent. But I'll go ahead and play the clip and we can talk about it after. They had me winning no round, so hands getting thrown now, leaving bleeding right above the eyelid. Kind of low brow. Who's your family when they see the spaghetti stains? The bows out. Couple combos in the alien natal. He feel alone now. I go wild. Like so wild. I'm talking more bars than Hershey. Sound like pronouns. Let me slow that. <laughs> So there are a few things in that pocket that I like, you know, he's chain punching, he has some good wordplay. I'm gonna ignore all that though because I wanna focus on the main punch. The ending punch for that whole little segment is I'm talking more bars than Hershey, sound like pronouns. I can't say for certain that nobody else has done the same technique, but I can't think of any other examples of this kind of thing off the top of my head, and I don't recall ever seeing, you know, the same battle rap technique being used by anybody else. But the thing that I thought was kind of interesting about the bar if you look at the part right here, this is kind of a traditional X like Y punchline. For example, if Appa wanted to, he could have just said, I got bars like Hershey, sound like pronouns. For the most part, this is a typical X like Y punchline. However, if you've been in battle rap long enough, you know that this is a very played out bar. It's a very simple bar, but kind of the whole point of the bar here was to be deliberately misleading. And you can even tell when Appa's delivering the bar, he's not delivering it with full energy like it's something that the crowd is meant to react to. Instead, he does the reveal, and then there's kind of a pause. Then he does the second reveal, which was the real punchline. Like so wild, I'm talking more bars than Hershey. Sound like pronouns, let me slow that. <laughs> And I've been talking about, you know, X like Y. If you saw episode number eight, you know, X is I got bars. Y is going to be Hershey. And going back to the analogy that I made in episode eight, where it's kind of like a Trojan horse. He says, I got bars. That's where you sneak in the double meaning. Then after that, the viewer will hear the Y, which would be Hershey, which causes them to reanalyze what the bar is. But then they're kind of let down. And that's kind of the whole point of the bar. So really what he did was create a red herring. And the whole analogy about it being a Trojan horse this would be kind of the equivalent of you send in a Trojan horse and you might even tip off the opposing army. And in this particular scenario, it's not the first time they've ever seen a Trojan horse. They've already been fooled by that whole X like Y format in the past. And so they see it, they expect something to pop out and nothing pops out. Only to find out that he actually snuck in another double meaning and the double meaning was within the Y. So instead of Hershey, this was actually gonna be Hershey. So now instead of X like Y, it's actually more like X like Y like Z. Sound like pronouns. Really it's a slightly more advanced type of misdirection than the X like Y punchline. In battle rap, punchlines happen all the time and you kind of get used to the same formula. So I really like the idea of doing something like this because to me, it's unique and it stands out as opposed to every other formulaic punchline that you hear battle rappers say. So if I wanted to pull off this technique, there's a couple different approaches I feel like I could take. So one way, if you understand the structure, right? Yeah, there's a double meaning inside of the X, but really that's only there to kind of set up a bar that's gonna be a failure. The real double meaning is actually hidden inside of the Y. When you have a traditional X like Y type of punchline, the Y is almost always like a person, a place, or a thing. It's some kind of proper noun. So, I mean, you really have a lot of different options. You know, Michael Jackson, Apple, Harry Potter, literally any character from Harry Potter, the Beatles, any member from the Beatles, Batman, any villain from Batman, Pokemon, any name of a Pokemon. There are literally millions of people, places, and things, and that includes Hershey, which is a brand of chocolate. So maybe you could do something like, you better lower your tone like Barry White, or they'll have to dig a hole for this cracker, something like that. But the whole point being that the double entendre is actually within the name of the thing that you're referencing in your original X like Y punchline. Then you could take the double meaning from that part and then do the reveal. And that's basically how the overall technique would work. One other way you can do it is try to start from really played out bars. You know, if you're a battler and if you've been doing it for a very long time, you definitely have a dictionary in your head of different played out bars, because if you didn't, you wouldn't really know which bars to throw away, which ones to keep. You know, some ideas have been done a lot. So one example of a very traditional played out X like Y punchline might be, I'll put a blank on your back 
like blank. And more often than not, people will be referencing, you know, some kind of sports player. So you might say, I'll put a nine on your back like Tony Parker. And again, you're kind of doing the same thing. At the end of the day, the double meaning needs to be inside of the Y. If you wanted to, you could say, you know, 22 or nine or whatever, but I'd rather not limit myself to a certain number. Instead, you can just go through, you know, a list of different athlete names and try to look for a name that might have a double meaning. Maybe a name like John Wall. He doesn't wear two anymore, but I could say something like, I'll put a two on your back like John Wall. John could be another name for a bathroom, so a John Wall could be like a bathroom stall. So then, you know, for your Z, you would have some kind of reference to a bathroom stall. I don't know. I'm just trying to give you the overall idea for how this type of thing would come together. Or a name like Drew Brees, which can also be a double entendre for drawing a breeze. And then something about, you know, leaving a window open. The point being that there are thousands of different athletes out there. Some of them might have names that can be a double entendre. And you can even do a nickname like Dr. J. And keep in mind, this is only one example of a played out bar. I got bars like Hershey, also another example of a played out bar. You could do a cocaine bar, something like I'm cooking that white girl or something like that. And then literally your Y could be any white girl. As long as you can take that name and then flip it into a double entendre and then do a second reveal after you do that played out bar at the beginning. Anyhow, that is all I have for this video. Definitely check out Rum Nitty vs. Appa, which is available on the iBattle YouTube. And stay tuned for another episode.